In my last video, I attempted to clarify the terms of use of Creative Fabrica's commercial licensing agreement. But what I didn't cover in that video was the copyright aspect as it pertains to using third-party artwork from KDP's perspective. When it comes to using third-party artwork in a commercial project, the copyright laws can be very difficult to understand. In fact, it's almost impossible to find legal literature that clearly explains it in any great detail. But I've spent the last few days combing through KDP's user guidelines, as well as Title 17 of the United States Code, trying to get a better understanding of how copyright works in this situation. So in this video, I'm going to attempt to make some sense of copyright law as it pertains to the use of third-party artwork in your KDP projects. And I'm going to do that by using my own limited knowledge of copyright law, combined with legal definitions that I've taken from both the U.S. Copyright Office website, as well as KDP's own user guidelines. This should be fun. Hey guys, Greg here. Hope everybody's doing well. Okay, so before I jump into this, I just want to point out that I am not a lawyer, so don't take what I'm about to tell you as law. I'm simply giving you my interpretation of the literature that I've pulled from a few legal websites that address this issue, and I'll put a link to those websites in the description section of this video. I know that many of you who watch my videos are not artists, and that you can't really afford the fees to commission an artist to create one-off illustrations for your commercial projects. So using a site like Creative Fabrica is really the only logical solution for many of you. And this is why I created all of those videos teaching you how to properly prepare artwork before using it. My intention was just to help you avoid any legal complications down the road. But I just want to make it perfectly clear that I am not giving you legal advice in this video. I'm simply pointing you toward the legal literature that best describes your situation, and I'm giving you my interpretation of it. How you choose to use this information is entirely up to you. But if you have concerns over the legality of what you're doing in your own self-publishing business, then I strongly recommend that you contact a copyright lawyer to get definitive answers to all of your questions. That being said, let's see if I can make some sense out of this chaos. Okay, so I think that all of the confusion starts when you're forced to make this one little declaration as you're uploading your book to the KDP website. And that is, I own the copyright and I hold the necessary publishing rights. That one statement alone causes grown men to break out into a cold sweat and causes women to have horrible nightmares. Now before I try to make sense out of that statement, I first need to define what copyright is and how it pertains to books and artwork. And I'm going to do that by using some government websites. Now as an artist, this declaration is a mere formality to me. Because I'm the person who created my book, as well as the person who is publishing it, I know that I own the copyright. And because I'm the person who created all of the content inside of the book, I also know that I have the necessary publishing rights. So for the purpose of this video, I'm only going to focus on copyright as it pertains to using third-party artwork, and I'm only going to focus on artwork that is being purchased from Creative Fabrica. Every platform that sells third-party artwork has its own commercial licensing agreement in terms of use. And since I'm only familiar with Creative Fabrica's agreement, I'm only going to speak to that. So the first thing we need to do is define what copyright is. According to the U.S. Patent and Trademark Office, copyright is a federally granted property right that protects rights holders from certain unauthorized uses of their original works of authorship. I want you to remember those words, original works of authorship, because they're going to be important later on. To be eligible for protection under the Copyright Act, a work must be fixed in a tangible medium of expression. A literary work, for example, can be fixed in a book. Copyright protects only the expression of an idea, not the idea itself. This principle, sometimes called the idea-expression dichotomy, ensures that the protection will extend only to the original elements that the author has contributed to a work, and not to the work's underlying ideas, which remain freely available to the public. A copyright is secured automatically when a work is created, as long as the work contains a sufficient degree of originality. And this is where the ambiguity comes in. Who determines what a sufficient degree of originality is? Well, for starters, the courts, when they're giving you a verdict on your copyright lawsuit. Amazon and KDP, when they're reviewing the book that you've uploaded to their website. And Creative Fabrica, when you're using their artwork. You see, originality is on a sliding scale. How original something is comes down to the opinion of whoever is making the judgment call. And this is why copyright laws are so confusing to understand. 
Now, before we get into how using third-party artwork affects copyright, we first need to take a look at KDP's user guidelines as they pertain to copyright and using third-party artwork. So in their content guidelines, under the heading of illegal or infringing content, KDP clearly states that we will not accept content under copyright that is freely available on the web unless it is provided by the owner of that copyright. So what that first part of the statement basically means is that you can't just download images from a Google image search and then use them in your KDP books. You need to be able to prove where the image came from and who holds the copyright on it. And then you must obtain written permission from that person to use it. Now it's in the second part of the statement where it says, unless it's provided by the owner of the copyright, that Creative Fabrica comes into play. Any artist who sells their artwork on Creative Fabrica has agreed in a legally binding contract to grant non-exclusive commercial usage rights to any customer who purchases their artwork, just as long as they use it within the terms laid out in Creative Fabrica's commercial licensing agreement. You see, Creative Fabrica is just basically acting as a broker between the artist and the customer. Creative Fabrica's commercial licensing agreement, along with the license key that you get when you download your artwork, is your proof that you have permission from the artist to use their artwork in your commercial project, just as long as you are using that artwork within the terms of Creative Fabrica's commercial licensing agreement. Now, before we go any further, we need to clarify a few more things. In a newly created work, who owns the copyright? Ownership of copyright is like a chain, with the author creator being the first owner and therefore being the first link in the chain. The second link in the chain is usually the publisher, but copyrights can be transferred to pretty much anyone. But traditionally, the creator and the publisher are the first and second links of that chain. So for all intents and purposes, as it pertains to KDP, since you are the person who is creating your book, that makes you the creator author of it. And since KDP is a self-publishing service, that means that you are also the publisher of your book. So you are the first two links in that chain, and therefore you are the owner of the copyright of your book. But before you get all excited, we need to clarify a few more things. Since you're using third-party artwork in your book, we first need to establish what the copyright rules are for that. Now this is where it gets tricky. Because you're using artwork from many artists, in my opinion, that type of work would be best described as a compilation. And the definition for that reads as follows. A compilation is a work formed by the collection and assembling of pre-existing materials or of data that are selected, coordinated, or arranged in such a way that the resulting work as a whole constitutes an original work of authorship. The term compilation includes collective works. Again, this is just my opinion and I'm not a lawyer, so use this information at your own discretion. I'm simply trying to draw your attention toward literature that best applies to your situation. Okay, so if your book is a compilation, then how does copyright apply in that situation? Well, according to the US Copyright Office, since a compilation falls under the jurisdiction of collective works, then the copyright should work as follows. Copyright in each separate contribution to a collective work is distinct from copyright in the collective work as a whole and vests initially in the author of the contribution. Which basically means that each artist who contributed artwork to your book still holds the copyright to their work and that their copyright and your copyright remain separate. In the absence of an express transfer of copyright or any rights under it, the owner of the copyright in the collective work is presumed to have acquired only the privilege of reproducing and distributing the contribution as part of the particular collective work. If I'm interpreting this right, this means that the only rights that you have to the third-party artwork that is in your book is the right to reproduce it as a collective whole or in the form of your book and the right to distribute it as a collective whole. So as for the individual pieces of third-party artwork contained within your book, you have no rights to any of that. Your copyright only exists with your contribution to that collective work as a whole. And your contribution lies in the manifestation of the idea into a tangible product, which is the designing of the book, the layout of the book, any literature that you placed inside of the book or on the cover, as well as any unique design elements that you've added to the third-party artwork that you used. So if we go back to that declaration in KDP, based on the definitions in the Copyright Office website, since you're creating a compilation, and since a compilation is considered to be a new original work of authorship, and since you are both the creator and the publisher of your book, it only stands to reason that you would own the copyright of your book. 
Now remember, when it comes to owning copyright, there is a scale of originality. Exactly how original is your new work of authorship? Did you transform it into something completely different? Or is your work just a bunch of other people's artwork hastily thrown together in a book? And keep in mind that it'll be KDP and Amazon that determine whether or not your book is original enough to be sold on their platform. So make your books unique. Now as for the second part of that declaration, based on the contract that Creative Fabrica has with artists who sell on their platform, I would say that you do have the necessary publishing rights, just as long as you're adhering to the terms of use of Creative Fabrica's commercial licensing agreement. Now I know a few of you are going to chime in right now and say, well, what about all of those people who are using third-party artwork and are having their books rejected or suspended? In this situation, I can only give you my opinion as to why I think this is happening based on KDP's user guidelines. So if we take a look at Creative Fabrica's commercial licensing agreement, there's a section called Full Print on Demand Usage. And under this agreement, a customer is allowed to use artwork that is purchased from Creative Fabrica as is, without modifying. Now let me be clear here. If you were to print your books out on your home printer, staple them together, and then set up a table on your front lawn and sell your books to the local kids in your neighborhood, you would probably be just fine using this content as is. But you're not. You're publishing your books through KDP and you're selling your books on the Amazon platform. So you must abide by their guidelines. And just because Creative Fabrica has given you permission to do something doesn't necessarily mean that KDP will as well. Both platforms are governed by their own terms of use. So let's say you follow the terms of this particular section and you purchase 50 coloring book illustrations from one of the artists on the Creative Fabrica website. And then you place those 50 images into your book as is and then upload your book to KDP. Chances are someone else has already used at least one of those illustrations in their own medium content coloring book that they're currently selling in the Amazon marketplace. Now according to the KDP terms of use on content quality, under the heading of disappointing content, you are not allowed to use content that is excessively reused, recycled, or repeated within or across books, which is another way of saying that they don't want duplicate content on their platform. It doesn't matter whether you're using 50 duplicate images or just one. Duplicate content is duplicate content. When you're creating your books, try to make them as unique as possible. If you don't know how to do that, then watch my last video on understanding the rules of Creative Fabrica's commercial licensing agreement. I'll put a link to that video at the end of this one. And try to stay away from using the same artwork in multiple books. If you're doing that, you're just asking to have your books rejected. So I would say that the first reason people's books are being removed is because they're using artwork that they found on Google and they don't have the permission from the artist who created it to use it. Crooked people steal artwork from artists all the time and then upload it to third-party websites claiming that its license is Creative Commons. Just because someone says it's copyright free doesn't mean it is. Make sure you know who is creating your artwork before you use it. The second reason their books are being rejected or suspended is because they're using third-party artwork without modifying it enough first. And again, determining whether your artwork is modified enough is solely at the discretion of KDP and Amazon. So if your books keep getting rejected, then there's a pretty good chance that you're doing something wrong. Now the third reason that people are getting their books rejected has to do with using AI-generated artwork. AI generators like Midjourney are trained by using billions of copyright-protected images that were created by human artists. And nobody really knows exactly how those generators are creating art. Are they simply referencing other artwork the way human artists do, or are they sampling it, which would be copyright infringement? We've all seen artwork that has been created by an AI image generator that is clearly in violation of the copyrights of the original piece of artwork that it was referencing. So when a coloring book page is created by an AI image generator, no one can say for sure whether this image is original or just a copy of another copyright protected work of art that exists somewhere else in the world. The software is using billions of images to create from. So the only way Amazon finds out if an illustration is infringing on someone else's copyrights is when that artist files a copyright claim against the piece in question. When it comes to using third-party artwork in published books, Amazon wants a paper trail so that they can say definitively who owns the rights to that particular piece of artwork. With Creative Fabrica, for the most part, that's pretty straightforward. You have the artist who created the piece that has granted commercial usage rights to customers through Creative Fabrica. 
You have Creative Fabrica who has established a commercial licensing agreement and you have the customer who has a license key to prove that they have purchased the commercial rights to use that artwork. It's all pretty much cut and dry. But with AI generated artwork, there is no copyright, there is no artist, and therefore there is no obvious ownership. And that creates very choppy waters for Amazon to navigate legally should anything go wrong. This is the very reason that Adobe has decided to use only images that are Creative Commons to train their AI image generator Firefly. Just like Amazon, they're trying to preemptively sidestep all of the legal fiasco that's going to be coming over the next few years as a result of AI generated artwork. So if your book keeps getting rejected and you have AI images in it, that may be the reason why. Now the final reason your book may be rejected when using third party artwork is once again due to art thieves. People who steal artwork from artists and upload it to sites like Creative Fabrica claiming that it's theirs and that they own the copyrights to it. And since these people sign a contract, Creative Fabrica has no reason to doubt them. Unfortunately, until a copyright claim is made by the original artist, it'll go unnoticed. And when Creative Fabrica does eventually find out, they usually just terminate that person's seller account. But by that time, the damage is already done and the customer who used the artwork has probably had their book removed from Amazon. But just know that this is not really a common occurrence. So based on KDP's user guidelines, I would say that those are the main reasons why some low and medium content book creators are having their books rejected and removed. As you can see, copyright as it pertains to the use of third party artwork in commercial projects is very complex. And just remember that the opinions in this video are just that, my opinions and interpretations of copyright law. If you want confirmation that what you're doing is 100% legal, then I strongly recommend that you contact a copyright lawyer to find out for sure. This is your business, and if it's your intention to create a passive income for yourself that generates 30, 40, or even $50,000 a year, then I think spending a few hundred dollars on a copyright lawyer is a pretty good investment. Look, as I said at the beginning of the video, the best way to avoid all of this drama is just to learn how to draw your own original artwork. And I know some of you are thinking right now, but learning how to draw is so hard. But if you ask me, I think learning how to draw is way easier than navigating all of that third party copyright bullshit. But if learning to draw just isn't for you, then you should at least learn the principles of design. If you're going to be using third party artwork in your books, then you need to be making them as unique as possible. And the best way to do that is by learning the basics of design. And my playlist Self-Publishing 101 has hours of tutorials that can help you do just that. And you can find a link to that playlist right here. Until next time, take care.